What's up, guys? It's Toronto Artube, and today we're gonna be talking about the worst thing about Gen 1. Now, oh, are we? Are we really gonna be talking about the worst things when it comes to Gen 1, or are you about to talk about my favorite things when it comes to Gen 1? Hey Pokemon Masters, Bucky Toby here, and yeah, I wasn't planning on this video at all, but I just saw Tyranitar Tube's latest video, and I, I can't sit by. I have to say something, you know? I've avoided the confrontation of, of YouTube dramas for the last seven years, but you know, dang it, I'm getting involved, I'm getting in the ring, so Titar, here we go. For those of you who can't tell, obviously being sarcastic, Titar was one of the channels that inspired this channel. His video is linked below and I recommend checking it out because generally I agree with a lot of the things he talks about. This is his video on why Generation 1 actually isn't that good and not for the reasons that I think most people talk about, which is, oh, it doesn't have the running shoes, it doesn't have abilities, you know, and these things that were introduced later on down the line. No, he's just taking Gen 1 on its own in a vacuum. Here are the things that it's kind of missing out on. And some of the things that Titar says, I completely agree with but others I just I was watching and I was like what are you talking about you literally inspired me to go down the route of Pokemon theory I'm getting ahead of myself let's just let's just watch some of this video together okay okay the first thing is untapped lore in Pokemon red blue green yellow all of them Gen sure. 1 has this interesting thing going on where they have this underlying story with Mewtwo happening and this game happens after that the story with Mr. Fuji getting Mew's DNA making Mewtwo in where in Cinnabar lab and then Mew goes off into faraway island and is chilling but the game takes place after that and Mewtwo is just found in a cave and then meanwhile there's these remnants of Mewtwo potentially in the story like Giovanni wanting the Sylph skull skull because he wants to be able to catch ghost types to hunt down Mewtwo or Giovanni going to the Sylph Co president to get a master ball to catch Mewtwo and it so at this point I'm just thinking like okay cool what's the problem it's only a theory but if Gen 1 instead of making Mewtwo's story this extra lore or not giving proper reasoning to Giovanni's actions they've remade this game so many times R leaf green and fire red let's go they never thought to make that Mewtwo lore into anything good right good a hundred percent and i'm on the side of pokemon here for this because to me what makes the world of pokemon so mystical and magical and worth exploring is that there are mysteries that we don't have all the answers to i like it when they say here are the dots paint the picture yourself i mean that should be obvious. I make videos about Pokemon theories. The whole point is taking dots and joining them together. The point is, is not to say that they haven't got a plan or that there isn't an answer. It's just that they're not sharing the answer with us. And I'm okay with that because that level of intrigue, mystery, the fact that the world is clearly well developed and written, but we don't have all of the answers makes me want to know more about the world. But I don't see it as a bad thing. That That is what intrigues me about the world of Pokemon. This game takes place alongside this untold Mewtwo story, and they just never told it. You ask Masa in interviews if Mews are dittos, the sucker doesn't even remember anymore. He says no. We're so far away from Gen 1, it's like they'll never tell the Mewtwo story anyway. I mean, look how well people loved it in the movies. In the movies, Mewtwo had this thing where it had part of a human's DNA. I think it's like Mr. Fuji's daughter. Mewtwo in the movie is freaking insane. This man got philosophical. He doesn't know why he's a clone. Right, so you know, they've already given us the answers in the movies anyway, and it's just in the game, it's missing that. And so you can then decide as a, as a player, was, is the movie thing canon, or can we take hints of what was in the movies or in the manga and apply it to the world here? And you get to decide your own headcanon for the game. And I think Pokemon's a role-playing game, so having your own headcanon, having your own way of telling the story is, like, pretty fundamental. And I know that's obviously supposed to come in in, like, the choices of Pokemon, but at the end of the day, every player started with one of three Pokemon, Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, or in Pikachu, I guess, if you played Yellow first, right? Um, the, the end of the day, like, the, the options are limited, so giving people additional ways to imagine the world, to think about the world, to have interpretations, and to be able to have discussions about it, right? Which is what I do on my channel and one of the things that Tita you inspired me to do is to have discussions and think about Pokemon in ways that uh didn't that you might not have thought about before I'm gonna come back to that but I want to there's another point that you make that I just think is really interesting number two what even is a gym leader and elite four 
So this is along the same lines. I don't want to just like um, turn this into a reaction video where I'm going, uh-huh, 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 I disagree. The point is that like, you know, Titar's saying, hey, you know, I'd love to learn more about how the Elite Four works and how the champion works. And like, I get that and I agree with that to a certain extent. I would like to know more, but I don't want to know everything. I think the air of mystery is really, impor really important. Now, now, obviously, I think there's good ways of doing this and I think there's bad ways of doing this. And really it comes down to how well written is the world. So you've got a question about a world that's been written. Uh, what, what's the deal with the Elite Four? Or what's the deal with Mewtwo, for example? I like it when writers and creators of worlds leave a little bit of ambiguity. This isn't to say that they don't know the answers. The writers, the creators should absolutely know the answer. How was Mewtwo created? Game Freak should know the answer to that question, 100%. If they don't know the answer to that question, then it will become apparent over time, over the years, oh, they never really had an answer for this. They're just sort of like winging it and the world loses a level of consistency and with it a level of quality. The lore and the world building is just not as good. But when they do have an answer, which I believe that they do, I believe they fully knew in Gen 1 what the backstory was. And again, the dots are there. Which of the dots you join together is up to you and the, the picture that that paints, that's up to you. Um, but there is an answer there, which means that our theories can have a level of like grounding and level of basis and not just be random fan fiction effectively. Um, I, I, that's something I love about fictional worlds. And with the Elite Four as well, I have to dive into that question before, like what's the deal with Pokemon gyms and how do you pick gym leaders? And there are some consistencies between Pokemon gyms and Elite Four members, but there are also a lot of inconsistencies. That is one of those questions that I'm not sure that Game Freak had an answer to. And I agree, I'd like to learn a little bit more, but I don't want to know everything because if I knew everything, it would take out the air of mystery about it. And I think mystery is an integral part of this world there's a third part to titar's video where he talks about mew how mew was just unobtainable in generation one and he talks about how that is really frustrating and it's like yeah it's frustrating but again it's the air of mystery it's knowing that there are more pokemon out there than just the 150 that you can catch in the game it's knowing that the world is so much bigger than what's being portrayed in the game that helps it me but that makes you go wow, I want to know more about this world. And when Generation 2 came out and Togepi was no longer just a Pokemon in the anime, but a catchable Pokemon in the game, it was like really exciting because you're like, oh my goodness, this is the part of the world that Tog. So I'm not that bothered about it. And I get it within the context, if, you, if you're really just going within the context of Gen 1, where people have no idea if Mew would ever be obtainable, then I guess fair enough, I can kind of see that point. Um, I guess you have to trust that eventually they'll release Mew, but maybe you've got no way of knowing that back in 1996. So, you know, fair enough. But all of this is to say that I found it just really odd because it was coming from Tyranitar Tube, a channel that inspired me to do Pokemon theories. I want to show you something. This is, to this day, one of my favorite Pokemon theories, and I'm really sorry, Titar. It's, we're going we're gonna to plaster up young Tyranitar Tube up on the screen. This is a video that I'm also going to leave link Pokemon below. I don't recommend anyone check it out because it's such a brilliant Pokemon theory. This is about how they, how Volcanion is possibly like a human-made Pokemon. It's like an artificial Pokemon. And I still believe that it is and talk about this on my Pokemon Tree of Evolution because the evidence in this video is really, really strong. It's based on points that exist in the games that are... They're there. They're all in the Kalos games. There are a lot of little hints about Volcanion that you can pick up on and lots of things that come together that kind of make sense. Um, and then you can go, oh my goodness, this is a human made possible Pokemon possibly made by Team Flare. That's really, really interesting. Without it, Volcanion actually has basically no law. The evidence just doesn't mean anything. But the idea that perhaps behind the scenes, they knew what the uh, origin stories of Volcanion was and, and Titar was the one to join those dots together. I think that's really, really exciting. Um, and I can't recommend that video enough because I think it's brilliant. And I recommend you check out his other video where he's talking about the problems with Generation 1 because there are some legit problems in there. Um, all of this is to say, when it comes to modern Pokemon games, the thing that I find that I'm looking for uh, and the thing that I think Legends Arceus did really, really well with like the prehistory with the ancient hero and the diamond and pearl clans and that i'm hoping pokemon continues to do going forward with with scarlet and violet is not 
I, I want law, right? But with law, I want, I don't want a consistent, this is absolutely what happened, here's the story. Ambiguity is so important. It's that air of mystery that makes me go, I want to discover more, I want to explore more. What's over there? And you might not find what's over there is the entire picture, but you might find a breadcrumb that connects to other little breadcrumbs that will lead you to the answer. And that is the most exciting thing in Pokemon, full stop. And I love it. Okay, YouTube drama, we're on. Tita, let's go, let's go. I guess just sort of let me know what side of that you're on in the comments down below. This was not a video I was planning on making today. I just watched this video and I was like, I was sort of like ready to go into the comments with like an impassioned speech, but I thought I'd just do a video response as well. And Tita, keep it up. You're keeping me very well hyped for Scarlet and Violet. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. Enjoy your week. And uh, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. As always, a massive thank you to those of you who support this channel on Patreon. You make this channel possible. And a special thank you to the big patrons of this month, the Elgator, Jed Rubin, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you.